tech rant time. Worried about your new PC purchase? Don't fuss too much because it's all the cost of a sandwich on eBay in 10 years. This is an i7-920 4-core, 8-thread CPU, $8 with free shipping and free returns on eBay. 10 years ago, that was a $330 CPU. Not convinced yet? I paid $550 10 years ago on Newegg of all places for this exact model of SSD, not this specific one, it's not my listing, but for this SSD, it's a 160 gigabyte Intel X25 G2 SATA 2 SSD, not even the SATA 3. I remember you bought that. This is for sale today for $23 with free shipping. That is a 95% loss in value. If you are looking to buy a computer, have it last a long time, not have it cost you very much money, be able to sell it for most of what you paid for it, you're in the wrong industry. That's not how this works. There are times when you can buy something, use it for a while, and sell it for close to what you paid if you get the timing just right. If you bought an RTX 2080 Ti in 2018 when they launched, and you sell one today, you can get back like 80 to maybe even potentially 90% of your profit of what you paid for it. Mm -hmm. You're still losing a little bit, but not much. But if you keep it five years, if you keep it seven years, it's just not going to be worth very much money. But you will have also gotten five or seven years of use and enjoyment out of it. You'll have de you're depreciating its value over time. It's the same thing as buying a car. You buy a new car, you spend $50,000, and in five years, it's worth $20,000. You can buy a used car, but if you buy a three-year-old used car for $30,000, in five years, it's eight years old, and it's worth ten dollars or $15,000. You spend less, but not as much less as you think. You might have lost $30,000 value in five years on a new car, and you'll have lost $25,000 in value on five years on a used car. So you save $5,000 or $1,000 a year, mm -hmm. or $83 a month. Mm -hmm. How many people who buy used cars realize that you're potentially less than $100 monthly total cost of ownership difference between brand new and three years old? Not many people. But it's a cash flow issue because the monthly yes. payment is more than $83 difference, but it's Correct. worth more after five years. Correct. If you can float the note, or if you have the cash, not all American-made sedans are horrible no matter what, new. But a Honda Accord? A Toyota Camry, mm. a Honda Odyssey, buy those new all day long and twice on Sunday. They make no sense as used vehicles. The same thing is true with computer parts. Because what's interesting is if you look back over time, there are some parts that have held their value. They're not quite 10 years old, but take your i7 4790K. Mm -hmm. It is now six years old. Yep. It was $350 when it was new in 2014. Okay. It is still worth $200 on eBay. It has retained more than 50% of its value right. six years later. But if we keep that chip until it's 10 years old, it won't be worth 50 bucks at best. I mean, it won't be worth much. Three to, does Patrick have $3? So there comes a point at where keeping stuff either really short term mm -hmm. or really long term has its value. But usually somewhere in the middle is where it makes the most sense. The middle. If you are hoping to somehow hoping go through several GPU or CPU releases and not spend very much money, I think you're going to be I think you're going to be disappointed. Disappointed. Computers have a per month and per year cost to own. They just they just could, you know, that assumes of course you don't keep them for 30 years and they become a retro classic and rare. I mean that's sort of a different conversation. But even then, if you look at the cost of what, for example, um, an Apple IIe in good condition is worth today, they're actually starting to go up in value on, yeah, on eBay. I know, you said that. But not compared to what they cost new inflation adjusted. A nice Apple II, IIe or 2GS from the, from the 1980s, inflation adjusted with all the trimmings. I mean, you're looking at somewhere in the five to $6,000 price range in today's dollars. They're not worth that today. Maybe if they were like new and sealed box, but why would you do that? That's silly. 
you know, you, you'd have been better off buying the S&P 500 30 years ago and exactly. leaving it there. Exactly. So even retro computers really don't hold their value. Even if they feel expensive today, that's just inflation adjusted. They're actually still pretty cheap. So if your question is, do you, do you sell your stuff before the new stuff launches? If you have extras, sure. I've been selling off some of my extras. I'm whittling myself down to sort of having just one or two of Thanks, each man. CPU and each You're GPU welcome. so I can do generational comparisons. But when I did my which RTX 2060 should you buy, I had six of them. Yeah. I don't need six 2060s. Nope. And with the 3060 coming soon, yep. I need to get rid of my existing 2060s before they lose a bunch of value. That's true. So it makes sense for me to sell them. Correct. But not all of them. Correct. But if you only have one RTX 2070 Super and you paid $500 for it six months ago, yes, you can sell it for pretty close to what you paid for it. Maybe 10% less, but pretty close. There you go. Not counting eBay fees and whatever. There you go. But let's say you sell it for $400 net after whatever. What are you going to do until the new cards come? Uh... Don't stress... It's all $5 eBay fodder in 10 years. Exactly. 